Hello, I'm Richard Vobes. I'm the Bald Explorer and I'm on another walk. And this time I'm in Chichester in West Sussex. Chichester, a very important town or city, in fact, in West Sussex. And I'm starting here on my little walk through the town uh, city <laughs> by the Roman walls. Although this bit is actually probably the remade Georgian walls. Let's, let's head off. So I'm going to start in Eastgate and make my way up, hopefully, to the cathedral. And it is actually incredibly busy today. I've come on a midweek lunchtime period, so we'll weave through the various people who are out enjoying themselves in Chichester. Chichester is um, a very important town, as I say, city um, in West Sussex, located down on the south of England and it was a very important Roman town. Um, now, the Roman name of this is Novia Magus Reginorum, if I've got that correct. I may have um, messed that up, but you'll have to forgive me on that. Um, so, the Romans came in in AD 43, as everybody knows, and Chichester was strategically a very ideal place for the Romans to set up camp with its close proximity to, well, France or Gaul as it was then known. And of course they immediately built um, a thick wall around the town. And you can walk around the, the Roman walls, or what's left of them. Originally they were six and a half feet thick, which is a pretty hefty bit of wall if you think about it. And these Roman walls, they lasted for 1500 years um, until the, jo the Georgians sort of rebuilt them and made them a lot narrower. But they are interesting to, to have a look at. The Romans, of course, famed for their Roman roads. And from here in Chichester, you can follow, certainly on a map, you can follow quite a bit of it um, by following Stane Street. And that started from the crossroads at the top here. Um, the Romans also famed for their amphitheatres. There's an amphitheatre, or at least the, they found the foundations of an amphitheatre just outside the Roman walls in Chichester, and also Roman baths. The Romans, very clean lot. So from the centre of Chichester, then, the Romans, this, this whole town, um, the county town, um, it's the only city in West Sussex, um, this county town is on a cross formation. And although we have the Anglo-Saxons coming in and then the Normans, it hasn't really changed very much from the Roman plan. I'm making my way up to the very delightful uh, Market Cross, which was built in 1501. But that's jumping ahead of our story somewhat, because after the Romans had been in, you had the Anglo-Saxons coming in. And the Anglo-Saxons, funnily enough, they strange bunch. They didn't use much of the town except they enjoyed the they enjoyed the protection of the Roman walls and so King Alfred made this a a burr town, a fortified town and so they definitely used those those big thick walls. And then the Normans came. When the Normans came um, Roger de Montgomery who was uh, one of William uh, the conqueror's mates was given huge swathes of land up and down the country. He was the first Earl of Shrewsbury and as well as having Shropshire as one of his uh, presents for being so helpful in the in the invasion of, um, of Britain, he was given a lot of Sussex and this was one of his towns. He built a castle here, although actually in Chichester there is there's only a mot and a bit of a bailey left. I think the castle, and I can't be sure about this, was made of wood, because there certainly doesn't seem to be any sort of remains of the castle left. So the Normans came in and they, they put forward their dominance and everything around the place, which was very important to keep the, uh, the Brits at bay. But one of the things the, the Anglo-Saxons had done prior to uh, the Normans coming in is they'd set up a cathedral 
in Selzy. Now Selzy is just a few miles away from here, so they set up their little cathedral in the uh, 9th century. And the Normans weren't having any of that. They didn't think it was an appropriate place down in Selzy, so they moved it and they decided they would build it here in Chichester. But the, the Normans hadn't really chosen the best place to build their cathedral. Unbeknown to them, the ground wasn't ideal. And over the years, this fantastic cathedral has suffered many catastrophes, uh, namely a couple of the towers collapsing. Uh, in 1210, the southwest tower collapsed uh, and had to be rebuilt. And then in 1635, the northwest tower collapsed. I'm just going to get myself knocked over, so I'm going to choose not to walk in the middle of the road. And interestingly, the 15th century bell tower was built away from the main body of the cathedral, which in itself is a bit unusual. And, and so is a, a little rarity to come along and see. And I'm sure that's because they started to learn about the mistakes that the, the Normans had made. And then, of course, there's the spire. Chichester, Sp Chichester Spire is seen from everywhere. Um, it is a fantastic landmark. And if you were one of the captains of the ships uh, sailing around the Solent, you used the spire the high spire to navigate by and if you're driving anywhere in the county as you approach Chichester you see the spire poking up out of the landscape it is absolutely fantastic now the spire had its own trouble for in the 19th century it collapsed it telescoped in on itself falling in and had to be <laughs> rebuilt like so much of the cathedral and consequently it was and it's now on the top and it looks absolutely fantastic. Chichester now as you walk through the main centre you no longer see the timber frame buildings as once was in the Middle Ages when the, um, the Butter Cross was there which is a beautiful fantastic building. Uh, there's only one like it in Sussex. There's another cross in Alfrestone but the Butter Cross is an absolutely um, terrific place. Like a market cross, traditionally, you would have your, your butter and your dairy products, your milk and all the rest of it so, sold from that point. So many of our villages had similar sort of things, or small towns at least. And then as you go through, some of these terrific grand properties all really stem from now, from the Georgian period. But again, like so many of our towns, much of them are hidden behind what would have been a timber frame building. Finally, I'm coming up to where the uh, west gate would have been. Chichester, I believe, only had four gates, north, south, west and east gate, and all of those no longer exist, unlike some of the other places I've been to where they, you still have um, one existing gate, such as at Bridge North um, and Ludlow in Shropshire. These don't. And I think that's um, such a shame, but it does mean at least traffic can get access into Chichester. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my little quick uh, walk through, leaving Chichester and the spire just poking up in the background and the bell tower. And if I carry on weaving around in this direction, I'll eventually get to the uh, festival, the Chichester Festival Theatre, which was built in 1962 where a lot of touring um, plays and theatre companies start off before going around the country. Anyway, do give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Till then, goodbye.